Okay. Uh, good morning and welcome. I want to request uh, one of us to lead uh, with a word of prayer. Uh, could you? Could anyone please do that for us? Le um, thank you, Jesus, for this um, time we have to come to know more of you, more of your word. And Lord, thank you, Lord, that um, you would empower uh, Pastor uh, Nancy to share with us what you have to say and that our hearts are going to be open if I to receive. And um, thank you, Jesus. I pray that we have a good time together and that um, our um, knowing the Father God of you and how um, to overcome the works of the devil, Lord Jesus, that we will be strengthened. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for everything in name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, I'll continue from where I stopped in the last class. We were talking. Um, about the victory of the cross and how Jesus has completely defeated the devil. And sometimes this is not recognized by believers, maybe because they have not been taught uh, these truths from God's word, and uh, which is why you know we are not able to believers are not able to apply it. We said that for lack of knowledge, uh, God's people perish. A scripture from Hosea four and verse six tells us that. So the truth is that we have complete mastery over the devil. We have been given authority. We have also been given uh, power uh, over the enemy. Uh, we have been given the keys of the kingdom. We know that Jesus commissioned us, gave us all. Uh, he said, all authority uh, on heaven and earth is mine. I give it to you. And then, you know, uh, that when we operate, we are actually going against a defeated enemy. Now, a couple of uh, things in continuation, right? In continuation of this concept uh, that I wanted to bring to us is there in our notes. You please follow along uh, in chapter five together with me, uh, where we study that we have complete protection okay uh, i shared bits and pieces some examples in the last class so you can you can connect or relate with that uh, we said that you know uh, when jesus commissioned his disciples to go and minister in part of the holy spirit he said nothing by any means shall harm you uh, we also talked about the scripture in 1 john 5 verse 18 where it says the, that when one walks in uh, the ways of god or in other words without the uh, open doors or entry points to the devil then what happens we the enemy cannot touch us Okay. Uh, there are other scriptures like Isaiah 54 verse 17 where it says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you, you shall condemn. And this is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. Other scriptures, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and deliver them. Psalm 91 he said that that God keeps the one who uh, you know uh, dwells in, in the uh, presence of the Lord. God protects such a person. So we have protection. We don't really have to worry that there will be some sort of uh, an attack by the enemy. So here are these additional uh, thoughts that I wanted to share. One is that uh, because Jesus has done the work and we have complete mastery on the devil, there is this concept where you know, it, it just said that uh, Jesus is fighting for us in heaven, you know, because he's in heaven as part of his uh, ministry in heaven. There is a concept that says that, you know, there are court cases. So every allegation that comes against us, Jesus is our advocate. Scriptures only tell us that, that Jesus is our advocate uh, uh, and that he is fighting each and every accusation and pushing uh, it down for us. Now, the reality is, uh, the book of Hebrews tells us that the Lord Jesus has become the sacrifice for us, paid the price for us in such a way that even though 
he referred to him as an advocate. The work which he needed to do to make us righteous, he already did it through the cross. So Hebrews 9.14, it says that he has perfected us once for all. So, and forever. So when he has perfected us, uh, it's not like every time he has to fight on our behalf as our advocate. So uh, when we say he's an advocate, we must understand that he has already completed that whatever legal uh, work against the devil. It's done. So there is no need for him to some something like appear before God, you know, like uh, uh, like something in a court setting, and each time fight every small case for us uh, against the devil. So that is not there in the scriptures because we read Jesus has already done it all to make us righteous. Now, legal rights. We said that the enemy cannot touch us, so we must remember that. Now that we are uh, in the mastery or the completed work of Jesus, uh, the enemy, we are in the kingdom of, of Jesus, isn't it? So when we are in the kingdom of God, different legal rights apply to us. Okay? And uh, the enemy no longer is our owner. Or we don't belong to him anymore. We are redeemed and we are part of the kingdom of God. And because of that, he has no legal rights over us. If he says, no, you are still my slave, uh, you are still, you should continue in sin and all, he can say, hey, no, devil, I don't belong to you. You have no legal rights over my life. Demons, you have no legal rights over my life. But we must remember, some of the earlier things we said, which can cause the enemy to influence us, such as, you know, practices, dedication, sacrifices, words. So if we have given entry points, then yes, you know, he can intrude. But if we have, haven't given entry points, then he has no legal rights. So we can always ask him to uh, leave and not inter interfere in uh, you know, our, uh, in what God is doing in our lives. So that is another thing. Uh, no more backlashes. Backlash is something like, you know, you go against a certain enemy and the enemy will attack you because you did this, he will do that. Uh, and I discussed that last time in our class and I said that there is no such thing. We don't have to be afraid. Now, does the devil uh, do things against people and particularly believers? Yeah, that is job. Whether we like it or not, whether we are doing something for the kingdom of God or not, he will still do that. Uh, so, we must not let that uh, put us in fear. Instead, we must do what God is calling us to do. So uh, what we are actually saying is, don't live in the fear that there will be a backlash. Jesus said, you know, go cast out demons, go deliver people, set them free. We just go and do it out of faith because we have complete mastery over the devil and Satan is completely defeated. Now, uh, in the book of Job, okay, there is a, a, a passage which we read that uh, Job says, what I feared came upon me. So, it gives us a clue. You see, fear is an open door. When we start thinking the wrong way, the wrong patterns of thinking, or uh, we are entertaining things like fear and anxiety, what happens? It's an open door, okay? And when I fear that this could happen and it happens, if I say, see, I told you, I, the devil is going to do this and it, he has done it. Why did it happen? Because fear gave the opportunity for the devil to do it. But when we don't fear, when we go by the word, can he uh, bring in a backlash? No, he can't. Because... We are not allowing him, but if we start fearing and worrying, that gives him an entry point. Okay, So let's remember that. Uh, and also there is a saying, I don't know how many of us have heard it. We generally say, uh, that saying uh, goes something like, new levels 
new devils okay that is to tell us that as we progress in our journey with the lord there can be challenges which are greater which are uh, bigger uh, and uh, that we should not become too comfortable and say oh i won at this level in this position in this capacity uh, in my call i have done very well so uh, i'm going to be fine all the time but as you go to the next level in christ you will see new challenges and so uh, somebody coined this this uh, uh, statement new level new devil okay meaning you will have more attacks you will have more challenges however you know one thing we have to remember is uh, we are seated with christ in the heavenly places and that's the highest level okay and we are functioning in authority from that level the highest level which no uh, demon can get to and so why do we worry about new levels and new devils whatever whoever the devil is whichever principality whichever power of darkness of course you know the lord jesus has conquered over every devil so uh, we must not worry too much that oh i'm going to face a bigger devil what will i do uh, right because now we are seated uh, with christ in the heavenly places and satan is under our feet so any more uh, things to talk about uh, uh, you know these truths so shall we proceed feel free both online and uh, in person students you can ask questions right uh, uh assumption is we have no questions here oh you have no questions okay that's fine okay we'll uh, continue then let's move on to chapter 6 and this talks about the authority and the dominion of the believers we will look at uh, you know the uh, different like we have authority but authority and its dimensions can be looked at in various ways that's what we are going to discuss here um, we will look at at least four dimensions here uh, we could also add another dimension called as empowered authority uh, but then here four are given so one is redemptive authority second is inherited authority third is positional authority and uh, fourth of course is delegated authority so we must recognize that we have authority and on the basis of uh, you know all these things so how does it work coming to uh, redemptive authority i've been talking so much about redemption jesus has uh, paid the price for us on the cross and by now we are in the kingdom of lord jesus in revelation chapter 12 verse 11 it reads uh, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death so uh, when we see the blood of the lamb what does it mean the blood of the lamb signifies that a work has been done to deliver us from clutches of satan forever okay uh, put us into the kingdom of god so that is redemption isn't it jesus paid a ransom and he brought us into his kingdom so we are now redeemed every part of us is redeemed because of cross of calvary and uh, i remember telling us in the last class that uh, therefore satan cannot put his works on our lives anymore okay unless we give him an open door uh like let, let's say you know sin or uh, some sort of an addiction or uh, anything that classifies the curse uh, right so many things are there in scripture he cannot forcefully put those things on us any more because he just has no legal rights on us uh, and uh, so we can look at it this way whatever adam and eve they lost in the garden of eden okay uh, 
through that tree which they accessed and they ate the fruit from, Jesus has nullified that through the tree okay, of Calvary uh, on which he hung for us and he put the price for us. And so we look at what the blood of Jesus has done for us in a uh, thankful way. And we recognize that what has the blood done for us? The blood has redeemed us. The blood has redeemed us. So when we are coming against the devil, we are coming against the basis of our redemption. We are saying, hey, devil, I am now redeemed. How can you, you know, touch my body with sickness or my possessions with uh, uh, calamity, destruction? You cannot. You just cannot because I have redemptive authority. Authority. The blood of Jesus was shed for me. And what does that blood say? The blood says, I belong to Jesus. I don't belong to you anymore. I belong to Jesus. That is redemptive authority. Where I, I stand with authority and say, I now am part of the kingdom of God. So whatever is legal or whatever is applicable in the kingdom will be operational in my life. So the blessing are now operational, uh, you know, victory is now operational because of what Jesus has done, not the bondages of the kingdom of darkness. So that's how we are that redemptive authority. Moving on, I'll just go on with the others and, uh, you know, I'll give you some time in case anybody has questions. Inherited authority, okay, inherited authority. That simply means that we are now sons and daughters of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we see scriptures that tell us that, you know, in Colossians 1 and verse 12, we are reminded that we are now partakers of the inheritance of the saints. So what has God done? He has made us sons and daughters. You know, John 1, 12, when we believe in him, we become a child of God. So I've become a child of God. I've become a daughter and a, a son of the Lord right now. And uh, in Romans 8, verse 16 and 17, over there, we see that the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So who have we become now? We are children. And we know that uh, it goes up to say, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and join share with Christ. So even in the natural, when uh, parents, children, what happens? Uh, the children, when they grow up, they are the heirs, right? Or even when they are young, if, if something happens to the parents, they are the ones who will inherit what the parents have left behind for them. So uh, the same thing is applicable for us now. Now that I am in Christ and I am a child of God, I have the authority. Jesus said he's giving me the authority. And so when Satan comes against us, as a child of God, I can say, no, no devil, you can't do this because uh, this is not my inheritance. What you're putting on my life is not my inheritance, right? Discouragement or uh, some sort of uh, a sense of failure. Uh, I can say no, not at all, because I'm blessed, you know, with with uh, Christ, in, with all blessings in the heavenly places. The Lord uh, leads me in triumph, victory in Christ Jesus. So we don't have to uh, go by what the devil is doing. That is inherited authority. Okay, now. Coming to the next uh, aspect here, which is positional authority. Positional authority, we have talked about this. Uh, we said that we are seated with Christ, and Christ is seated where? At the right hand of God. So my position itself shows that I am above you know, the devil. He is defeated. He has been crushed. So. Uh, I can function from that place each time. Now, Satan questioned me and say, uh, you know, how, how dare you uh, come against me or stop me? But I go by the spiritual reality. And what is the spiritual reality? The spiritual reality is that I have authority. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly places right now. 
okay so that is positional authority then there is delegated authority delegated authority is uh, we understand it in the sense of uh, uh, you know when jesus sent out his disciples uh, they came back and said in your name you know cast out uh, demons we saw that passage right and what what happened they became representatives of jesus they went to do the works of jesus jesus didn't go but when they went they were representing jesus okay so in other words you can also say that whether jesus went or they went same kind of authority was demonstrated and the work got done isn't it so delegated authority uh, is understood uh, as we as god's people even today when when scriptures tell us that we have the keys of the kingdom or all authority heaven and earth, jesus gave it to us he now tells us go into all the world make disciples baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit or you know he says that uh, you should lay hands on the sick and will uh, recover okay uh, so what happens he is sending us it has to do with us being commissioned okay we are now representatives we have been commissioned we have been given the authority of christ and we can use that uh, and also we would notice that uh, you know jesus said that in my name in my name you will cast out demons uh, in my name you know you you will lay hands on the sick so in his name it's it's like we are going but he also gives us a badge or uh, something to represent him with and that would be the power of the name of jesus so we could look at it as uh, something legal right that he has given us and say that we do have the power of attorney we can go in the name of jesus and we can work against the uh, devil and his kingdom so that would be delegated authority okay empowered authority another concept it's not here in our notes but uh, you know that's uh, also some we can we can add empowered authority is to say that we now have the empowering of the holy spirit isn't it so when the believers were baptized in the holy spirit they went ahead and did the ministry just the way jesus did it and today as believers we are baptized in the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit is operational in our lives uh, and uh, uh, therefore we can be victorious against the devil so these are all the dimensions of authority authority in general yes we have been given that authority we are understanding that authority on the basis of these things so one is that i am now redeemed the devil has no legal rights on my life i am a child of god so i've inherited blessings and victory you know not his works uh, and so i'm supposed to walk free uh, i have positional authority in christ you know i am uh, above the works of the enemy so uh, uh, the devil is under the feet of who jesus isn't it uh, so jesus is head and we know that who has crushed the devil jesus has crushed the devil but jesus is the head of the body so think about this jesus is the head we all have a head we have a body now if the head has crushed something it also means that the body has crushed something isn't it so it's not like the head is separate and the body is split it's together so jesus has crushed the devil the head of the body has crushed the devil which also means i have crushed or we have defeated the devil in that sense okay we are not putting uh, making less of what jesus has done but we are saying we derive from it we uh, receive the goodness of what he has done and so the that satan is now under our feet or he is defeated that is positional authority which we have then delegate authority delegated authority is uh, since he sent us he commissioned us 
uh, you know, we have the name of Jesus as the badge of authority. We have the power of attorney. attorney. We go against the devil. And when we go, it's somewhat like saying, uh, you know, Jesus is going. And if Jesus' command is expected to uh, de bring deliverance, if our command is expected to bring deliverance, because it's we are not doing it in our power. You're doing it in his name with his power. Okay. So that's how we uh, an empowered authority, of course, by the power of the spirit. So why are we learning about all these things? We are learning about all these things so that we can be victorious. We can use our authority in our everyday life. So uh, in our everyday life, you know, we're facing many challenges. Some of them come because Satan uh, is trying to interfere. And so uh, we can take whatever we are learning, the knowledge of this, and we can say, no, I have the authority based on all these dimensions. And so I will not let Satan touch my family, uh, my health, or you know, my ministry, my church. Uh, you can go on and on. You know, whatever belongs to you, is now part of the kingdom of God. And so Satan cannot do it. So we can exercise and we can use our authority in this way. So how do we go ahead and release this authority? One key way is uh, the words that we speak. So when I speak words in line with God has spoken, what God has spoken of my life, then uh, I'm releasing you know, that authority. So the words are one of the primary ways in which uh, I can release the authority. So even saying something like, uh, uh, I declare, you know, uh, that wholeness and health is my portion. I declare that uh, uh, I have not received a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Or to say that, uh, uh, what else? You know, so based based on that, you're talking to talking regarding your health, talking regarding uh, emotions. If we are battling fear, or uh, uh, let's say the enemy is just put a lot of fear about, hey, you will not have the wisdom to do this. You say no. God said in His Word that uh, if anyone lacks wisdom, they can ask, and God will give it to them. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, he is a God who gives an abundance. So I'm asking for wisdom. God is going to help me. God will give me the wisdom. I can do this. So what am I doing? I am releasing my authority. How is the devil trying to affect me? Accusation, temptation, confusion. Right? He's trying to put it in my mind. But I'm saying, no. I have all these dimensions of authority. So I'm enforcing. You know, we use that term, enforce the authority okay so uh i'm going to pause now any any thoughts anything to add anything to clarify please go ahead Uh, okay, so today seems very silent. Uh, so as uh, as they say, right? Only two two possibilities: either everything is understood or nothing is understood. I hope it's the former, right? So with that hope, uh, I will proceed to what we have next here. Okay, everything is understood. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's great. Yeah, I, I was saying the same thing. I, I was saying, of course, you all understood everything. So that's oh, nice. Uh, let's now move on to the next chapter here. This is uh, uh, chapter seven, where we learn about all the things that we have authority over. Uh, so, so far, we have recognized that. You know, God gives us the authority. So what are all the uh, elements or if you want to just determine a simple way, things 
that we can exercise our authority on. Uh, we could look at this in broadly like two realms. One is uh, in the spiritual realm. And uh, the other, of course, is in the natural realm. Okay, we would we would uh, notice that some of the spiritual things that happen, we can exercise our authority on that. Even in the natural, we can exercise authority. Okay, uh, we we will talk about. So talking about the spiritual realm, uh, sometimes there is the demonic influences. Isn't it? Satan and demonic influences. We talked about that. Uh, we said when there are open doors, uh, uh, Satan does many things. Even when there are no open doors, uh, he can try to oppose right the word of God. So in this way, uh, he comes against us. But what this is happening in the spiritual realm? Now that we know we are victorious, the schemes of the devil, the wiles of the devil, remember the working, the, the methods of working of the devil, the plots, the schemes, we can go against that. Okay. Uh, and, and that's what Jesus said. See, whatever the enemy is doing in 1019, he said, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. This is kind of representing demons demonic powers, Satan, okay? And he said, all the power of the enemy. So what is the demonic realm doing? I give you authority on all of that. So we can exercise our authority against demonic powers. So if anything we identify as a demonic work, instead of... You know, just getting scared and saying, oh, now what shall I do? We can say, hey, no, I have been given authority to trample serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means will hurt me. So I am going to resist what Satan is doing. And, uh, you know, Jesus said, in the name you shall cast out demons. What is that? Same thing. Demonic realm, uh, influence of demons in the form of, uh, you know, in uh, maybe early influence, oppression, remember, possession, so many things happen. So, at whatever level we recognize it, we can actually come against the demons. We can uh, be in that place to cast them out. And that's how we exercise authority over demons. Now, demons, they have, uh, they do their work, okay? They have an agenda and they work. What do they generally do so, in the life of Jesus? That he came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus, uh, in Acts 10, 38, he says that he healed all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So, what does the devil do? Oppression. Okay, uh, uh, we, we know that he brings oppression in various ways. It can be a mental thing. In our mind, he tries to oppress us or he could try to oppress us uh, in, our, in our physical health, right? So sickness, disease is something that he can try to put on us uh, or he can oppress us in our situation let's say uh, he's not able to get to our mind or he's not able to get to our bodies then what happens he'll try to do something outside us so he find a loophole somewhere uh, and then, you know try to make that problem uh, so in the situation he tries to bring an issue that could be, you know, like a delay or a hindrance or a lack of clarity, confusion, disturbance. Many things can happen. So these are things when they come against us. Remember, we said when uh, the storm, Jesus was in the storm and his disciples were afraid. And Jesus recognized that, hey, this is not a work of God. What did he do? He went against it. He rebuked the storm. Okay. So the same applies in our lives. Identify that 
this is not god's work god is not doing this god is not oppressing me god is not making me sick or you know god is not putting all this confusion in my life then what do i do i go against it right so i take authority against it and i say no devil i resist i rebuke you know i cast you out so that's how we would respond use your authority against these spiritual oppositions uh, so you know and, and this demonic oppression sometimes uh, could come through people as well so remember in the progression we said that people can be possessed but they can also be empowered right they come to a a, a position where they now have so much of uh, power which they have gained from demonic uh, from demons that they are influencing a lot of people they could be influencing an entire region okay uh, or communities so in such instances we can still go against you know the demonic work so a good example is in act chapter 13 where we see uh, in the island of paphos where there is uh, this uh, sorcerer by the name of elimus okay bar jesus uh, paul and barnabas they go to minister to a very learned man but because this elimus sorcerer is there what is happening is he is he is uh, creating some spiritual hindrance to the acceptance of the gospel so what does paul do you know he understands that he goes against the demonic work through this sorcerer and you know he rebukes him and you know we know the story he goes blind and once this person uh, is no longer hindering the uh, work of god in the in the life of that man sergius polis i think his name is and uh, so then what happens that person actually is willing to hear the gospel there is no hindrance by demonic power so there can be certain people who have now become the source of demonic influence when we encounter such situations uh, we can overcome you know demonic influence to people as well now earlier we said that uh, influence through uh demons can happen in the systems isn't it so there are systems such as politics business arts entertainment uh you know a family so even in all these realms you know we find that systems can influence but people of god can overcome that so we have seen uh, in the past uh, also in scripture we have seen people like uh daniel who was so powerful during his times there were certain systems but what about daniel he functioned in the knowledge of god in the wisdom of god in the you know whatever his understanding of god's authority was in his generation he used it what about elijah remember his time was a very difficult time because there was a lot of black magic sorcery witchcraft demonic powers at work but he overcame them so there can be systems political system you know religious systems but we don't have to be afraid of satan can try to work through all this but we can overcome you know moses also was a uh, he's known as a prophet and a deliverer he worked with the power of god to lead the people and uh, the power of egypt okay and the people of egypt uh, the oppression that was in the land of egypt god helped him break out of all that okay that that's a spiritual thing to be able to break out of the demonic strongholds is that a possibility it is a possibility because now we have complete victory or mastery over the devil so these are all areas where we can use our authority so there are a few more uh, places which are enlisted i'll i'll go to that but i'm looking at uh, uh, nina here and nina says how do we recognize that a problem sickness like autism uh, is demonic 
how do we go about bringing deliverance use the authority given to us okay that separate questions uh, so Nina, the first one how do we recognize that a problem uh, is demonic i think we have to be sensitive to the leading of the holy spirit because it's really hard to tell uh, now a sickness the origin of that can be just a physical one in that situation, if we try to cast out demons, one, it will not work. Second, uh, it is very frustrating for the people because that's not the solution. It will not give us a solution. So constantly try to, uh, you know, command the devil and all in that situation will not work. So it's only by the leading of the Holy Spirit, Nina, I would say, we can recognize that a problem is a demonic problem and not really a physical problem. Now, having said that, a few indicators we could look for, we will come to, we are going to be talking about this a little later. Something like, see, if a problem has been uh, or is being adequately addressed in the natural okay and there is no solution to that we are doing best let's say there is a disease and it is being treated it is being uh, uh you know but we're dealing with it but in the long run it it gets very confusing even for the doctors they're like hey it's not happening that there's no logical conclusion there's no logic left anymore you know in in that disease process that could likely be uh an influence from the t body's world so that is an indicator uh we would say sometimes you know uh along the same lines when sickness you know you address it it comes back you addressed it adequately in all the natural ways and prayer again it comes back it's just recurring and recurring and recurring it could be that there are some open doors and there is some demonic work so in all these ways you can kind of recognize that something is not okay here okay so uh these things will lead us to identify uh other than coming to you i'll just uh answer nina's questions uh is that okay nina does does it make sense okay uh well like don't see the response uh anyhow uh, no problem uh, so nina's second question uh yeah being sensitive to the holy spirit that's the, that's the first and foremost thing and observation of the situation that also will give us some clues uh now your second question how do we go about bringing deliverance use the authority given to us primarily of course we have faith but release the faith through our words, words, okay? We release the authority through our words. So that would be uh, one of the primary ways in which we do it, uh, Dina. So our words, okay? So is, is that okay? Any follow-up questions? All right, sure. Thank you. Uh, because, you know, that's how Jesus did it. He commanded, he should. But yes, sometimes that authority also uh, was led in, uh, released in other ways, prayerfully, you know, he touched people or something like that, and, and the sickness left them. Uh, so, but as I said, primarily, that's why I use the term primarily through the words, uh, through you know, command, he should command, be still or uh, the fig tree commanded it, it withered. So that's how it worked. He, he, God spoke and, and the heavens and the earth came into existence. So the words we speak carry authority. Okay. Uh, Anand, yes, go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, I have a question that uh, 
I was not able to understand as to how uh, positional authority and uh, delegate authority are like different. It's like what is the main difference? Can you just tell in like a simple manner? Okay, so Sean, I was just thinking how to clarify this to you. Uh, so it's not that one is different from the other. That's not the point I was making. Uh, for example, what can I say? Uh, okay, so I, I have this phone with me, right? So uh, it's the same phone. Okay. But then what happens is, you know, this is the back of the phone. This is the side of the phone. So these are the dimensions of the phone. So in that sense, we have been given the authority. And what I explained to us today is the dimensions. So it's not different. You know, this authority is different from, it's the same authority. Or in other words, in a simple way, on different sides of the same authority okay did you did you understand uh ma'am so basically what you're telling is that um this authority that how we use in different ways the same authority but you use it in different ways yeah. okay so partly partly yes um uh, or rather, let me put it this way. It's not that we use it in different ways. We may use it in the same way, but I'm saying the base is different. Okay, so when I when I um, uh, talk about delegated authority, I'm, I'm using the authority on the basis of the fact that Jesus has sent me. Or let's say, once I'm fighting with the devil, and I'm saying, you cannot do this because I'm a child of God. So I'm fighting on the basis of, I'm using my authority on the basis of the fact that I'm a child of God. But it's the same authority. I'm using it in the same way, right? By resisting the devil, by uh, aligning to the word of God, by speaking the word of God. So the ways are the same. But my understanding in that moment is, you know, a different basis each time maybe. So that's how it is. The origin or the basis is what is different. Are this so confused? Uh, no, so we're saying that um, based on different origins that uh, we have this authority. The same authority, but we have it from different origins. Yes. Uh, yeah. So like, okay. is it like uh, use the authority in like different situations? Like yeah, of course. Just but the authority is the same. Authority is the same. Sure. Okay. So the environment, the environment changes, but the authority is the same. Is what I'm trying to say. Is that right? That's true. Yeah. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Uh. Okay. I I'll think of a. You know, very appropriate uh, example which will give you a still better understanding. Hopefully, next class, I think we've just uh, run out of time here. So, uh, shall we wrap up? Is, would that be fine if there are no more questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. All right. So, let's pray and close then, and I leave it open for anybody to lead in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us here today in class, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for helping us uh, understand about the thought you are, Heavenly Father. And uh, Heavenly Father, please bless all those who are present here in this class, Heavenly Father. And please help understand more uh, more about your thought, Heavenly Father. And more about all other subjects of your word, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, thank you, everybody. God bless you. Uh, have a very blessed day. And today is the 1st of March uh, when our prayer in the evening is going to begin. So I uh, encourage those who can make it in person for the prayer sessions to please do that. Those who cannot, you can always connect. Uh,
online. So uh, have a blessed day and uh, we will come back to our uh, teaching session on Friday. God bless. Bye for now.